Hello and welcome to this introduction to Hawaiki Kia, the new professional keying plugin for users of Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5, as well as Adobe After Effects and Premiere. Hawaiki Kia offers outstanding control, quality and performance at an unbeatable price. With advanced GPU accelerated performance and a host of professional quality tools, Hawaiki Kia offers some unique and powerful features that you simply won't find in any other Kia. So we're going to be looking at Hawaiki Kia in Final Cut Pro 10. And if you're a user of Final Cut Pro 10 or Motion, you might be wondering why you need another Kia in addition to the Apple built-in Kia. Well, you might have discovered that the Apple Kia is great for very quick results, but beyond that, the fairly limited controls mean that it's not that easy to fine-tune the result for a really professional-looking composite. So let's compare how the Apple and the Hawaii Kias deal with this particular shot. One of the key things to look for in any Kia's matte extraction process is how it handles fine detail like hair. And as we can see, the Apple Kia loses an awful lot of that hair detail in this case through excessive shrinking and blurring of the mat. If we compare the Hawaii Kia, we can see much better hair detail. And the second thing to look for is the quality of the spill suppression. That's where the color of the background contaminates the foreground edges. You can probably see that the Apple despill process has resulted in some fairly unnatural colors. Whereas if we look at Hawaii, we can see that the colors are much more pleasing and true to the original. So let's take a closer look at how it all works. Hawaii Kia comes with two modules, one optimized for green screen and the other optimized for blue. I'll be using the green screen version in this tutorial. So in this project, I've got two shots on my timeline, my green screen shot on the layer above and the layer below is my beach background. I'm going to come over and look for Hawaii Kia Green under Hawaii Kia here, and I'm going to drag it onto that clip. Then I'll hit Command 4 to open up the inspector and Command 5 to close down the effects browser. Now, as you'll see, this has created a partial key, but not a complete one. The first thing I'd recommend doing with Hawaii Kia is to come over to the view mode here and from the drop down menu select analysis and when we do that our key becomes represented by these different colors so this orange foreground is solid and not at all transparent the blue represents all those pixels that are semi-transparent and the black when we finally see it will be fully transparent now, as with any Kia, there are two stages to the process. The first is to make the background go fully transparent, and the second is to make the foreground as solid as we would like it to be. So, in order to make the background transparent, we'll use the Screen Density Control. And we've labelled that control with capital letters to make it easy to find. So, I'm going to grab that and I'm going to advance that control gently until I see all those background pixels go black. And then I'm going to come down to the matte density control. Again, we've put that in caps so you can see exactly which one to grab. And I'm going to advance that again very gradually until the foreground has gone solid. And you'll see that that's a pretty good result. If we switch to the view that you'll be more familiar with, that's main matte you'll see we've got a very tidy black and white mat. And again, if we switch back to final key, you'll see the result composited over our background. Let's just switch back to our analysis view, and this time I'll do it from the on-screen menu here. Now I've zoomed into this detail of the hair, so we can look at adding a few refinements. Not that we especially need it, because this key is probably good to go as is, but I wanted to show off a few of the controls that you could use. The first thing I wanted to point out was the benefit of using the analysis view. 
If you look closely, you can see that there are some speckles of blue in the front of her dress here, and those are areas that are not fully opaque or solid. But if we switch to the conventional black and white view, you'll see it simply doesn't show us anything about the existence of those stray pixels. If we switch back to analysis, they're completely obvious. And that's why we've given you this very powerful feature. So as I say, this mat is pretty good as is, and there's not a lot we really need to do to it. But I just wanted to show you some of the controls we can use to refine the edge. First of all, I want to open up the Advanced Screen section. And I want to look at Clamp Red. And you'll see that if I advance this, I can make a considerable difference to the amount of fine detail I'm getting from the hair. Of course, in doing so, I revealed some noisy artefacts in the source footage, so I need to find a way to compensate for that. The easiest thing to do is just to come down to the matte section and increase the contrast. And that improves the noise problem while still keeping that added detail. Let's look at the matte gamma. It's not something we particularly need in this case, but I wanted to show you how it works. If I increase the value, I increase the transparency of the edges. And if I reduce it, I reduce the transparency. In this case, we want to leave it at the default, but it's very handy to know that feature is there. Now you may have noticed that there's a little bit of stepping or aliasing on the edge of the mat here, just on her forehead and cheek. If I zoom in, you can see that more clearly. So to deal with that, I'm just going to turn on matte blur and increase the amount very, very slightly. You never want to use too much matte blur. About 0.75 is ample for this purpose. If I now toggle that on and off, you'll see it's taken care of the mat generally and improved some of the excess sharpness in that hair detail. So matte blur is obviously a very useful feature, but you really don't want to overuse it. One of the problems with the Apple Kia is that it blurs the matte aggressively and automatically in such a way that you can't reduce it or refine it. And unfortunately, a matte that's been excessively blurred is always the first sign of a poor quality key. So let's just switch back to the final key view and you'll see that there's some really nice fine hair detail in there now. So let's now close up some of these groups and we'll look at the despill option, which is down here. So if we now look at the despill view, this shows us the amount of green that's been taken out of the source image. So if we switch back to source image, you can see that it's been taken out of the backing and out of the foreground as well. What we've tried to do throughout with Hawaii Kia is to avoid giving you aggressive default settings. So you can just gently dial in the desired amount. Now most Kias give you a closed black box system for despill where you can't really see what's going on behind the scenes. But we've tried to show you the inside workings and what's more give you control over them. And for that purpose, we've given you the spill map view. So let's select that now. Now the spill map is an image map that analyzes the areas of excess green. So the backing is a bright area because it's very heavily green and all the foreground areas that are contaminated have been picked up by the spill map. My first step is going to be to increase the spill map depth. So we've got a stronger map that's going to take out more green. In this case, what I want to do is to despill the arms and the face and the hair, but to leave the dress color more or less intact. So in order to do that, I'm going to adjust the spill map red and the spill map blue, and I'm going to adjust them in opposite directions. So I'm going to increase the spill map red, and then I'm going to decrease the spill map blue. And so now we've got a map that's picking up the face and the arms and the hair, but leaving the dress more or less intact. So let's switch back to final key and see how that looks. So if I turn despill on and off, there's all that spill and there it is removed and it looks very natural. I just want to switch back again to the despill view and I'm not going to go into great detail about it, but you'll see that again, unlike many Kias, there's an alternative despill method and that's called unspill. 
And the advantage of unspill is that we can use these three RGB unspill sliders and we can mix our own despill colour so that we're not limited to the usual grey and we can choose a colour that more suits our scene and the background we're trying to match into. As I say, I don't want to go into detail about that here, so let's switch back to standard despill. So the next thing I want to show you is edge control. Let me turn on edge control by clicking its checkbox and let's switch to the edge mat view here. And you'll see that I've got a very fine edge all around the outside of the key. And this mat will allow me to adjust the brightness values just within that very fine edge area. If I want, I can increase the depth of that edge using the width slider. So I can eat a lot more into the foreground. But in this case, I'm going to stick with the default value. But what if I want to affect just a part of the edge and not all the way round? If I switch back to final key, and zoom in on the top of the model's head, you'll see this fine wisp of hair that's just a little bit too bright, and that's the detail that I want to tone down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to the edge mat view again, and let's zoom out. And what I'm going to do is turn on gradient qualify. And when I do that, you'll see we've got two colors defining the opposite sides of the mat. So we've got purple for value A on the left, and this kind of yellow for value B on the right. But what I can do is I can rotate it, so I'm going to rotate it through minus 90 degrees, and now my A value is at the top, and my B value is at the bottom. And then I can adjust the center of that, so I can just bring it down a little bit, and just fine tune the rotation so I've got the bit that I want. Now let's switch back to our final key view and zoom back into that problem area. If I reduce value A here, you can see that I can make an adjustment simply to that very fine wisp of hair and get it looking just right. And I can take value B and I can brighten it up. And that brightening is just affecting the lower area. So that's a very powerful, unique feature that gives you loads of control over your edges. Let's close down edge control and let's look at light wrap. So I'm going to show that group and I'm going to enable the light wrap checkbox. Now we need to pick a light wrap background. So we'll click on the image well here and then off the timeline, we'll pick our background clip and hit apply. And that's populated that image source well. Let's now switch to the light wrap view and we can see exactly what the light wrap is doing. If I adjust the light wrap depth, you can see that that's wrapping the light much further around the foreground. If I increase the light wrap amount, that's brightening it up. So I want to go for something like this. Let's switch back to final key. And now if I toggle light wrap on and off, you can see that that sat her back into the scene very nicely. Now to put the finishing touches on this composite, we can open up the color correction section. And you'll see we've got a very complete set of color correction tools built right into the plugin. So I'm going to turn that on and just make a slight adjustment to reduce the saturation. And let's make a slight adjustment to the mid-tones to bring up the brightness a bit until she feels bright enough to sit into the scene. Now there are a couple of extra features that I wanted to show you just before we finish, and those relate to what you'd do if you had a green screen like this. So what I've done here is I've simulated a desaturated, flatly lit green screen with a problem around the edges where the backing is very uneven. So I've got the Kia applied already, and let's switch to analysis mode, and you can immediately see that this is much more problematic than the previous version. However, this is where the auto switch comes in handy, so let's just toggle that on. And immediately you can see that that's compensated for that flat lighting and given us something much better to work with. 
So again, let me just adjust the screen density and then the matte density. And we've quickly got a decent looking result. I'm not going to fine tune it this time. It's just about showing you the general principle. So the problem is we've still got these edges and what one would normally do is adjust the screen density to get rid of it. But in doing so, we lose all that nice detail on the hair. And that's really not something we want to do. So what we need is a better way of sorting out those edges. Let's switch back to final key for one moment. And then let's come down to secondary mats. And you'll see that we've got additional matting options. Let me switch to the outer mat view. And we can see that we now have a mat that follows around the outside of the main key at a distance. And what this is, is a much more solid version of the main mat. Let me just adjust the outer expand so we keep that mat clear of any of the detail of the foreground. So let's turn outer mat on. And now let's select analysis view. If we toggle outer mat on and off, you can see that it's really taking care of those edges for us. If we switch back to final key, we can see we've got a great result. While we're looking at the secondary mats, let's also look at the core mat. Now the core mat is simply the opposite of the outer mat. It's a very solid mat for the center of the key. I'm just going to switch to analysis view and come over here and reduce the mat density down to zero to reintroduce those holes in the foreground. And if I now come back over and turn on core mat, you'll see that that takes care of those holes perfectly. Let's just switch back to the core mat view to verify what's happening. And as you can see, I can also shrink it in from the edges as necessary. So that's a very useful tool if you're having difficulties getting foreground holes to disappear. So I hope this tutorial has helped you appreciate some of the very powerful tools that make Hawaii Kia a truly indispensable keying solution and one that will really help you take your keys to the next level. Hawaii Kia is available exclusively through FX Factory, which means you can download a free trial version and try it out for yourself right now. Thanks very much indeed for watching.